How you doing guys and gals? My name is Doug Wilson and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. This video is going to be a little different. This is going to be uh, knife stuff video. Right? I'm going to talk about knife stuff. But in particular, I'm going to talk about the designs that I have had a big hand in designing either I designed them completely or I helped someone else design them and it's a collaboration okay um, and if you watch the channel you guys know what knives I'm talking about okay um, Yellowhawk is well known for these specific knives made by a couple of different makers okay um, so you guys stay tuned. I'm going to talk about all this stuff that you see here. And I'm going to show you a couple other things also. We'll be right back. So thanks for coming back. Or thanks for sticking around. Okay. Uh, right now... What I'm doing is, this this is uh, an LMF called the Light Multifunction. This is a collaboration between myself and Mike Wallace from Wallace Edged Tools. Um, the design was taken off of my original LMF one, um, which is no longer in production, so you can't get them anymore. Those of you who have them, you're lucky. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be making any more of them, okay? Um, we've kind of moved into a different uh, category of steel with these knives now. Um, and we're now making them out of CPM 3V. It depends on the size of the knife or CPM 154, okay? Uh, there's only slight differences to those two metals, okay? They're considered super steels, but they're one of the more affordable super steer steels that are real performers, right? Uh, you know, toughness is off the charts, wear resistance off the charts, strength off the charts, and they're a little more affordable than some other super steels. Uh, there's only a couple of super steels, in my opinion, that are better than these two, uh, CPM 3V, CPM 154, but they're only marginally better. Um, when you're talking about steels, especially these types, the, the, the differences are minor, generally, generally, okay? Uh, so this is the LMF, okay? It's a basic drop point, continuous belly, hunter bushcrafter okay that's what i designed it to be uh, that's what mike wallace and i were shooting for um, it's a high saber grind it feather sticks well uh, it comes from mike with a great edge on it um, i prefer a what i call a low shoulder convex grind and the only way to explain that is it's not a full convex edge, okay? I leave a little bit of a, a shoulder on there, and it's a cross between a traditional V edge, right? A traditional V edge and a full convex edge. It's a cross, but it's more convex. Uh, and that just enables you to field sharpen it easier, okay? Um, but, Right now, I'm trying to take out some nicks, okay? There are some really small nicks in the forward belly of the blade where I was cutting some food on a, a glass cutting board. And for those of you who are not aware, glass cutting boards wreak havoc <laughs> on an edge, okay? Especially a sharp edge. 
it quickly, and I mean within a couple of cuts, dulls your edge. I don't care what the steel is, okay? This is CPM 3V, and it dulled this edge in a few cuts, right? And it was one of those, like, kind of corrugated cutting boards, so it, it chipped the edge uh, noticeably. Uh, not real bad, but I can see them. They're microchips, okay, but I can see them. Uh, I'm just trying to get them out right now. And the way I'm getting them out is a diamond rod off of one of my sheath systems and two straps, right? I got some black compound and I have some uh, one micron hand American diamond spray on this piece of leather. And that's going to be a different video, the types of leather for your straps, okay? Um, I, I personally prefer a certain type of leather, and I can only determine that type of leather if I have it in my hands. I can't tell by a picture. i got to have it in my hands. Um, so i got a bunch of it in my shop that I happened to get. I got lucky, and I'm using it for straps. Okay, it's um, it's got nap. Okay, the leather has nap to it, not a whole lot, but enough, right? But it's also a very dense leather, dense, so that your blade isn't sinking into the leather and convexing your edge too much. Okay, um, so anyway, I'm just trying to get these uh, these little micro. Uh, chips out of here because um, I just I don't want them in there the blade is still sharp even with the microchips in it but you know I don't want them on there <laughs> so I'm just trying to work them out and I do that by uh, running a diamond rod from one of my sheath systems. Real simple field sharpening system I use, okay? Um, or one of these jeweler sticks, right? I'll use one of these, right? Just to work the chips out, and then I strop, okay? Uh, usually I just strop. I use my knife a couple of times, and then I strop it. Use it a couple of times, and I strop it, okay? Um, but sometimes I'll take that diamond sharpener off because you're gonna need it. In the field, for field sharpening, you're going to need this diamond hone. I guarantee it. Or a stone or whatever. But it's right on your sheath. It's a quality piece of equipment. I use them myself. Never had any problems. You know, they they get better with age. Uh, eventually, you're going to wear it out. You just buy a new one and stick a new one in there. Okay? They're not that expensive. Okay? So, anyway. This is the LMF. Made by Mike Wallace at Wallace Edged Tools. And you can pretty much see the design that I was going for. It's just a traditional wood lure style design uh, with a high saber grind. I like high sabers. I also like Scandies and I also like convex grinds. Uh, it depends. What one do I like the most? Hmm. It depends on what I'm doing. Uh, but I would say the High Saber, the Scandi, and the Convex are my favorites. Depends on what I'm doing. Uh, any one of those uh, grinds, right, is going to be effective at different things, but they're all effective at everything, right? If you understand what I'm saying, right? They don't do everything well, but they do everything pretty well. Okay? Um, so, that's what I like. Anyway. Uh, so, there's there's the LMF CPM 3V. These are G10 scales. Uh, G10's a little harder than micarta. Um, I, I think they're about the same weight per thickness okay uh, it just depends on what you they're both tough handle materials just depends on what you desire to have right 
Mike Wallace finds it easier to work with G10 and get these type of designs out of it. So that's what he works with. Okay, you know, he rounds all the edges off. They're really comfortable. Nice uh, forward finger guard there, right? Nice sharpening choil right there. Um, that, you know, that allows you to sharpen the entire blade. Um, and just a really good, comfortable EDC four and a half inch blade. Okay, it's five thirty seconds inch thick. He'll do it in eighth inch as well. Okay, uh, I prefer eighth, eighth inch, but it just worked out this way that I got five thirty seconds. That's all. Okay, so there's that. This is the LMF. Okay, this is one of the knives I had a hand in designing. Um, and like I said, it came from my design, but. Him and I kind of futzed with the design and came up with this, okay? Um, and he had quite a bit to do with it. He, he, he came up with the continuous belly on it, and I, I thought that was really special to have, something utilitarian and specific. You know, when you're, uh, certain cutting tasks lend to specific uh, cutting techniques, and that continuous belly helps, right? Uh, especially with skinning, right? This knife will skin, okay? It's got a nice belly on it, okay? It's not a skinner, but it will skin because of that belly, okay? That continuous rounded curve there. It's real subtle, but it's there. And food prep, okay? Which is two of the areas where some knives, a lot of knives, just fail, you know? So, there's the Kydex sheet that I built for it. It's the Yellow Hawk Customs. This is just my, uh, you know, bare bone sheath. I got a, a ceramic rod on there, and that's it. Tabby dangler with a tech lock. Uh, you can wear this three or four different ways. This this system. Okay, we like versatility here. Uh, Hey, if you haven't seen it already, go to the Outdoor Gear Review. The Outdoor Gear Review with Luke. I don't know his last name. He just did a phenomenal uh, review of one of our sheath systems that we built for him. So, check it out. I was very impressed with his abilities. Uh, he, and I didn't know it until he actually said it and then I started researching um, you know but he's really hard on some gear if it fails he's gonna tell you it fails I don't want it I don't I don't want it around me I don't want to use it right he'll tell you that but uh, this video went pretty good okay so smart guy intelligent guy uh, so I thought that was pretty neat uh, the next knife Okay, this is, these are more traditional designs that we've kind of ramped up a little bit, okay? This, this one is our BMF, basic multifunction. Basic multifunction, BMF, all right? It doesn't stand for big MF'er. It could, but, <laughs> okay, continuous belly again. EDC Bushcrafter, it's a little longer. This one's uh, five and a half, almost six inches. Okay, and Mike can vary the length of the blade for you if you want. Okay, this one's like five and a half. Okay, um, which is a good EDC uh, length for me. And it's three sixteenths inch thick. It could be five thirty seconds if you wanted it to be. G10 scales, traditional French trapper look to it with some modifications. The old French trapper knives were really built feebly. Uh, they, they weren't tough. You could bend the blades and, you know, real thin steel, 16th inch or whatever. Um, so, you know, when I tried to redesign my version of the French trapper, I built in some tough aspects to it. Okay? There's that one. This is the BMF with a pyro plug. Okay, the LMF doesn't have a pyro plug. This one does. 
I guess the LMF could have one if you wanted one. Just ask Mike, right? He'll put one in there for you. It, it will house a pyro plug. And that's for, basically it's a bow drill divot. You can get one in the LMF if you want, I'm sure. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, there's the BMF, right? Here's the system that I came up with for it. Uh, our systems uh, do not necessarily have to follow these lines. You can make them anything you want to make them, okay? Just vi visit the website. Make sure you read the home page really well because that's all the information that you need to know in order to go through this process that we have, okay? It's not a lengthy process, but it's a process that is critical if you want what you want. Get what I'm saying? So we give you exactly what you want uh, within our building parameters. Um, there are some things I will not do. I won't use snaps on sheath systems. They're failable. They always come undone. I do not use them unless the client really wants it to happen. Then I'll do it. I will do it. But I kind of, I kind of uh, buck against it. Okay. There's a few other things that I don't like to do. I don't like to build pancake style sheaths. They're too heavy. They're too bulky. They're too wide. Uh, they don't need to be that big, right? So uh, we consciously make these things as small as we can make them, as strong as we can make them, as light as we can make them. And I think we do a good job because I very rarely ever get a complaint about anything. So um, here's the system. Um, these are the things that I generally want on one of my sheath systems for the field. Um, and this, these, these options will carry you through if, you, if they basically extend your capabilities in the field. Okay. Hey, come here. Come, ah, 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 ah. Kiva, come over here. Come here. Come, come here. Come, 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 come. Sit, sit, sit. Lay down. Down, down, hey, down, thank you. Now stay, stay, stay. Sorry guys, uh, she'll run out into the street if I'm not careful, so. Uh, she'll get the scent of a squirrel or a rabbit and she just, she doesn't see anything but that animal's ass. So, um, here it is. I want a, some way to sharpen it effectively in the field. Effectively. That is, that's the, uh, the, uh, the word of the day. Effectively. There's a lot of sharpeners out there that aren't worth a shit, okay? Um, these diamond rods that I use, they're definitely worth a shit. And they work well for sharpening a knife if you need to sharpen it. It'll get out little micro cracks. It'll make your blade sharp again. I gotta watch her. <laughs> um, and then you use a strop. Real simple. I have a real simple philosophy for the field. I use what works and works well. Okay? And it's not a difficult system. There's three components. A diamond rod. Generally. Now sometimes it changes a little bit. But generally a diamond rod off of my system. Okay? Uh, if I need it. A lot of times I don't need the diamond rod, I just need the strops, a strop, okay? Usually carry two of them, just pieces of leather with compound, okay? This one has black compound on it. This one has one micron hand American diamond spray on it, okay? Which, phenomenal stuff, okay? I won't use anything else as far as diamond sprays are concerned. Um, okay, so ferro rod, a compass. This is, a, this is a Sunto compass. They're nice compasses. Yes, you can break them. Just be careful. Uh, they're, they're pretty durable, but they're still plastic. They're very accurate. That's why I use them. They're great mini compasses that act like a big compass, right? Got a bezel on it for, you know, all that neat map and compass stuff. Um, and then on the back, I want a some kind of surefire, okay? This is... Um, 
this is uh what do we what do we use live fire okay this is live fire okay just a small live fire sport on the back okay that's what i want on my sheath systems okay um and i tell you if i was doing something else out of the ordinary i might put something else on there like a tactical flashlight right here or something like that okay so there's that um now what's the next one i'm going to talk about the delta whiskey backcountry heva come 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 on come 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 here come, come. Ah, 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 ah. right here right here come Right here. Ah, ah, ah. Now sit. 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 Down. 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 Thank you. No, you ain't getting it. Stay. 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 She's learning new commands. She's young. She's only three. So, And I tell you, I haven't had her long. Four months, maybe. So I'm in the process of training her to do what I want her to do so she's safe. Uh, Delta Whiskey Backcountry. There, I tell you, there's a lot of design features in this. I, I built this knife from the ground up. Um, you know, basically, pretty much all my life said, you know, hmm, that knife is great, but it doesn't do this. This knife is great, but it doesn't do this. Then I buy another knife. It, I love this knife, man, but it doesn't do this, right? So I designed a knife that does everything I want it to do for a survival situation, a survival episode. And they do happen. Survival, ep I've been in one. They do happen, okay? Not very often to most people however okay but should it happen should you uh you know decide to go to enter into a survival episode that's why i built this knife okay it does heavy tasks chopping right stuff like that it'll also do light tasks like feather sticks and notching and you know woodworking and all that um does it do the small tasks really well no but it does them pretty well okay there are a number of reviews on youtube of this blade being used by reviewers for those smaller tasks and i've yet to have anybody say anything negative about this knife okay um yeah it's an ugly duck okay but in its ugliness it is unique totally yours if you have one i guarantee your neighbor's not going to have one and if he has one it's because you have one okay it, it goes like that okay they are expensive this knife is about 400 bucks okay in my opinion for something that you're going to bet your life on it's worth it it is worth it 400 bucks i you know you pay four thousand for it it's worth it right so every edge but the working edges no 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 come here K kiva kiva come kiva oh, she must pee or something she gotta pee hey come here come here come now sit 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 stay Any kisses. thank you a good girl, I'm a baby. All right, go ahead, go. Don't get into trouble, please. Oh. She licks her ass, right? Anyway, um, every non-working edge on this knife is rounded, right? Uh, the the uh, choke-up choil, rounded, right? It's camfered on the edges, very comfortable. Thumb ramp, rounded on the edges, right? Uh, they don't come that way, though. You have to ask Mike to do that, right? Um, this is the quintessential custom knife. It, you can have it any way you want. This this design 
but you can have the edges rounded you can have a little shorter a little longer whatever right um, but there it is it's very comfortable ergonomic knife uh, I can work with it for an hour and no hot spots right um, that depends on your hand is it gonna fit everybody I think it will I think it will it'll fit everybody's hand because I made it an oversized handle just slightly so that when you choke back your pinky falls in that pinky choil right there and you get great chopping action from the wrist now you don't chop like this okay that's inefficient okay you chop from the wrist let the knife do the work right and you go back and forth you know a couple chops this way a couple chop you make a v and you cut into that just chopping etiquette or chopping mechanics whatever okay every good outdoorsman should know that stuff um you know it's got a wide saber grind great for feather sticking uh, this actually has my low shoulder convex grind on it uh, and it is razor sharp right CPM 3V holds an edge forever as long as you're not cutting on a uh, glass cutting board. So it's got a continuous belly, right, for skinning. Again, that's one of those areas where most knives just fail. Okay, um, and trust me, in a survival. <laughs> In a survival episode, you're going to have to skin animals, right? If you're a good survivalist and you know some, some, some skills, then you're going to be catching animals and skinning them, okay? Um, it's not as easy as I, I'm letting no one to be, but um, you're going to have to skin animals, right? This knife will do it, uh, as well as food prep as also. It's a chopper. It's a slicer. Uh, it's a notcher, it's a feather sticker, it does everything that I want a bigger knife to do. Now this is about as big a knife as I will carry. Uh, if I want to chop wood, and I'm not talking about light chopping with a knife, okay? I'm talking about chopping big pieces of wood in half. I use an axe. That's what axes are for, they're for chopping wood. Knives are for cutting and slicing and stuff like that although they do overlap a little okay so the Delta whiskey backcountry there's that pyro plug I was talking about pass through compression pins um, all these air you know all the uh, non-working can be rounded for you um, you know the spine is 90 degrees that choke up choil is very comfortable and you know I designed this knife I did okay um, Mike Mike Wallace actually helped with the handle a lot you know getting the contours right and everything but it comes from my design and I believe in this knife so I use it a lot out there okay but I don't use it as much as I'd like to because I'm not always in a, a rough and tumble you know bushcraft or survival mode right so sometimes I leave it home, right? So there it is. If you're looking for a knife like this, you might want to give it a shot. It's got a nice pommel, 90 degrees, right? If you want to scrape bark or whatever, I use the spine, but you can also use the pommel for nuts and whatever, okay? So there is the Delta Whiskey Backcountry, CPM 3V, okay? That thumb ramp does have a use, right? That notch right there, that apex, does have a use, okay? It does. Okay, so here's the sheath system that I built for myself for it. And again, it's got a ferro rod on it, it's got a compass. This is one of our standard compasses. They're decent, they're decent compasses. I'll use them, right? But when it really matters, go for a Sunto, okay? They are much more expensive, but they are worth it. Uh, now, this one I put, I don't usually do this, because it's difficult to do. I have to modify 
the sharpener to do it. But this is an easy lap, okay? My diamond rod sharpeners are just as nice, okay? And they weigh a third less, <laughs> okay? Um, this is a pretty heavy brass monstrosity, okay? They work well. They really do, okay? So I, I, I wanted to put one on just to, just to do it, right? It's got a Baldrick carry system, tabby dangler. This knife is just small enough to wear as a tabby dangler. As long as you don't over build the sheath and put a whole bunch of stuff, flashlights. And if you want to put flashlights and everything on a sheath, which I do recommend, okay? It's not hokey. They do work, and they're very utilitarian. That's why we do it. Um, you know, I was in the U.S. Army Special Forces for quite a while, and <laughs> I believe that stuff is utilitarian, and sometimes you need it, okay? And if you don't have it, you might not have a flashlight. If you don't have it, you might not have a sharpener, because this is the last thing you're going to lose in an, in an emergency, okay? This is going to be on you. And if it's not, you're wrong, okay? Um, so the more you have on this, the more capable you're gonna be in that situation. So, and I plan for the unplannable, right? I am definitely a Murphy's Law kind of guy, okay? Um, so there it is. And it's got a live fire, uh, large live fire on the back, you know, tech lock, the whole thing. Uh, a lot of carry versatility. There's, I don't know, there's seven ways to carry this sheath. Seven. Okay. Um, all right. So there's that. Delta Whiskey Backcountry. That's another one of the knives that I designed. Okay. Um, and is in production right now. The next one is... Let's see where my dog is. You know, I try not to ramble on my videos, but a lot of my videos are informational, instructional. You know, uh, information is being put out, and I don't like to leave things out because I believe that being in the woods, being in the field, in the bush or whatever, when things go wrong, they go really wrong out there. And the more comprehensively you're prepared the better off you are so some of my videos are a little lengthy right and if you don't want to watch them don't watch them but I've been doing this a long time so Delta Whiskey Infinity right this is the prototype the Delta Whiskey Infinity is being built right now at LT Wright right LT Wright is building this knife, my design. Um, now, now, technically, it's a smaller version of the Delta Whiskey Backcountry with scaled down uh, utility. Okay, um, but there are some design features in this that are not in the Delta Whiskey Infinity. I mean, uh, Backcountry, right? Uh, number one, its size. This is an EDC size. It's a little big. It is on the larger end of EDCs, okay? I'm gonna be coming out with another design, okay? That's pretty damn cool. But it's gonna be smaller than this. It's gonna have a 4.75 inch blade, total EDC, you can wear it every day, and not just in the bush, okay? It's gonna be a cross between a fighter and a bush crafter. <laughs> it's gonna be wild, okay? There it is, Delta Whiskey Infinity. This is basically what the production versions are going to look like, only they'll be a little bit different. We did tweak a few things on the production version. Uh, main thing is going to be our logo is going to be on this side of the blade. The Yellow Hawk logo is going to be on this side of the blade, along with the LT Wright Pout House on the other side. Okay. Okay, right now this is, it's a Peter's heat treat stamp. Okay. So alright. It is going to have now I put this bow drill divot in here myself because it's a prototype and 
basically we decided that I would do some of the forming of the handle and then send it back to LT Wright and then he would know what I wanted okay so the pirate you know the uh, uh, bow drill divot is going to be a little more precise you know a little more machined <laughs> I did this with a Dremel tool okay and uh, and a drill bit so okay Fish eye pin and tube hardware. It's going to have thumb scallops, right? Thumb scallops. It does have a ramp there. The ramp is there for a specific reason for thumb pushes. That the top of that ramp fits in that joint of the thumb and gives you better leverage. Just that's the best way to describe it. You get really good leverage with it. Uh, if you want even more leverage, you choke up all the way and put your put your web on the other side of that and it fits right in there right that's why I designed it that way and you get a lot of leverage this way with it right I prefer a full hand grip right uh, putting my thumb on the spine doesn't work for me okay uh, although the spine in this area is rounded so you don't hurt your thumb okay a lot of thought went into this blade it's got a reverse tanto tip for <laughs> extreme strength in line, you know, the tip is in line with the uh, center of the the pommel on the back, right? It's got a small pommel for crushing nuts or whatever, and it's rounded so that when you're chopping, you could do light chopping with this, light chopping, right? When you're chopping, the back of the handle and the pommel doesn't come up and start digging into your hand like a lot of knives will do, okay? A lot of thought went into the production you know, the, the palm swell, everything, right? Your hand, it's like a glove. You, it, you know, like, like a hand in a glove. It is very, very comfortable, right? And I put this thing through its paces and I'm extremely happy with this performance. Scandi grind with a uh, convex micro bevel for strength. Um, you know, we toyed with maybe putting a convex grind on it. I don't know. Okay, so we went with the Scandi. We thought it would be the best option for this knife. Okay, so there it is. Delta Whiskey Infinity. It is 530 seconds, right? 530 seconds. Now, I'm sure you could talk to LT Wright and have a custom version of this made as well. Okay, I know a couple of guys who have done it already asked for um, different steels and you know some other stuff different scales and whatnot and that'll be something you have to do with him you can't do go through me to do that uh, all the ones that I have that I am having made um, are they're all the same with two different handle colors with two different colors of liners you know so I think it's a uh, black and OD green liners and then green with coyote brown liners but well, just like this one okay this i like this color okay i like black too so we went with half of them are going to be black okay there it is very comfortable very comfortable okay it's got that continuous belly for skinning and food prep also it chops very well because of that forward heaviness you know that forward belly right gives you a good solid chopping blade right light chopping it's not going to do what an axe does okay so it does chop and it chops quite effectively here is the system i designed for it but like i said yours doesn't have yours doesn't have to be this way this, this is what i prefer um this is um tan raptor kydex kind of a leather look to it tan raptor uh, diamond rod ferro rod sunto and a live fire sport on the back this one also has the ability to take the tech lock off and put two molly locks on there for pals webbing right so seven or eight different ways of carrying this sheath system i'm sorry six it doesn't have a baldric ring but it can have one because it's i set it up for it okay uh, 
Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hey, hey you, come here. Stop eating charcoal, right? You're gonna chum all over the steps like you did the other night. Come here, come here, come here. Be good, be a good girl. I don't like bad doggies, I like good doggies. My backpacking buddy. Okay, so that's it for my knives that are in production now. A um, couple of them were collaborations with Mike Wallace. A couple of them were my designs. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it goes without being said, they are my favorite knives, right? However, I have some other favorites that I didn't design. This is one of them. <clears throat> okay. Um, until I know about a maker, I, don't, I usually don't say anything about them. And the reason you don't see more knives on this channel is because there's a lot of knives that I simply don't like. Okay. There's some that I do. Um, but the ones that I don't like, which is a lot of knives, a lot of knives I don't like. They're not for me. You're not going to see them on this channel because I don't review or introduce every new knife or every new piece of gear that comes along. That's not my thing. I like to do things that I know work and work well. That's just me, okay? Um, so this is a Quick Hatch Trapper uh, built for me by Brenton Good, the owner of Quick, uh, Quick Hatch Knives. Um, uh, basically, long story short, <clears throat> he built me a knife to review, introduce, whatever, okay? And um, I love it. <laughs> this is one of those knives that I put in my hand, right? And I didn't, like, hey, that's nice, that's a nice knife, and then I put it down, right? And then I never touch it again, right? This is one of those knives that <laughs> I really like how he builds his knives. And the main thing I like is his blades, if you need them to be, are going to be thinner, right? This is 8th inch, 8th inch 01 tool steel, okay? I'm not a huge advocate of the forgeable steels, but I'll use them. They're good steels, right? I'd rather have CPM 3V or something a little tougher, but 01's a great steel, don't get me wrong. A2, 1095, I don't know about that. But, <laughs> okay, 01 tool steel. I blued the blade because 01 is notorious for rusting in like 20 minutes, okay? Hey, hey, no. Okay, there it is. The Quick Catch Trapper. This thing is a dream to use, right? A dream. I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to be all, you know, blowing hot air. And Brenton knows what I feel about his knives. He knows I love his knives, okay? Um, I tell you, I tried to get him to build one of mine, but... It, it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. So, all right. There it is. That's the quick catch trapper. It's got those pine cone resin scales. Um, I, I have my thoughts about pine cone resin scales, but I'm not gonna. I like the, I like the handle. It's pretty. You know, it hasn't done me wrong yet. So can't say anything bad about it. Okay. There it is. Quick catch trapper. It is a bushcraft wizard wizard right um there's that one okay i also like this this is a who the hell makes this kellum kellum small puko right this is what i will do my really small woodworking carving tasks with it's real light it's not super strong you can bend this blade okay so it's got limited use not my number one blade, but I use this one because I like it, okay? And it stays in the original leather sheath because I couldn't do any better. I could, but I don't need to, right? This is a nice sheath. It holds it, you know? It's not going anywhere. I wear it the way I want to wear it. It's got a couple of accoutrements on it, a little diamond rod. It's got a ferro rod on it. It's got a sharp, it's got a compass on it, okay? So that's one that I like. Okay, um, 
Okay, that's it for some of my favorite knives, right? And knives that I had a hand in designing. Okay. Uh, now, I promised my buddy, uh, William Walter, or Walter William. I, I don't know if it's William Walter or Walter William. You have to let me know, buddy. Um, I have it in my phone as William Walter. So... Uh, this is his Benchmade that we built for him, okay? It's a Benchmade Sear 1 Tabby Dangler system. Here's the Benchmade 162 Cyber. Uh, I do like this knife. I think it's the wrong choice of steel for it, but I do like this knife. I had one. I don't know what happened to it. I think we sent it out with a sheath and we never heard from it again. And it was an accident, right? Uh, we sent it out by mistake, and the, the client kept it and didn't say anything. So, uh, anyway. And I had, it was numbered. It was like one of the first 500 that were made, and it was like 150 or something. Kiva! So there's that. Cybert 162 Bushcrafter by Benchmade. I like it. Okay, I like it. I don't like the blocky style handle. Um, I have worked with this knife for 45 minutes at a time, you know, just testing it out. It never made it to the channel because I got hot spots, right? Right here. It, it hurt my hand, start hurting my hand on feather sticks, okay? So, but it's a nice knife, it is. Um, for guys who like it and it works for them, great. So here it is. There's the system, buddy, brother. There it is. There's your system, okay? Great retention. No rattle, no rhythm, no wriggle, no roll, okay? Right? Good positive retention. Got that yellow hawk click. Okay? So there it is. Good. All right. And this one here. I just had to show this one. I just finished it. All right. Now, there's a story behind this one. This is old school. I have a client in Australia who has purchased several of my sheath systems who wanted old school with new materials, right? <laughs> so, like, that's like right up my alley, okay? This is a Yellowhawk Customs Leather Elite. Full grain leather, right? And, you know, I've had guys say, oh no, that can't be. It, that can't be leather on there. There's no way he can do that. There's ways, I got my ways, right? It took me a while to figure out how to do this constructively, durably, right? Uh, so that it will last. It took me a long time to figure it out. Could, just couldn't get it right, but I got it right. I kept plugging away at it because somebody wanted one, so I kept doing it and doing it. I tried this three or four years ago and I gave up on it because I couldn't get the adhesion right, okay? It did pretty good, but I wasn't satisfied with it, right? So if I'm not satisfied with it, I'm not doing it. So I'm part Native American on my dad's side, um, so I, I kind of was brought up knowing Indian and Catholicism, right? Traditional Native American, Indian ways, and Catholicism, both, right? Uh, which is not unlike a lot of the reservations do, right? Um, I, I travel out to Rosebud Reservation sometimes. I used to do it a lot, don't go that much anymore. And I used to sing in ceremony with uh, some Lakota Indians, uh, in the Lakota way, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, I, I picked up beadwork and all kinds of stuff uh, throughout my life, right? Uh, I've been doing beadwork since I was like, I don't know, 12. So, uh, this particular client knew that I liked to do traditional Native American stuff as well, leather work and stuff. Um, you, you guys have seen uh, some of my work that I've shown in pictures, right? Um, but this is the first Leather Elite that I've put 
beadwork wound, traditional beadwork techniques. Okay, uh, here's some fringe beading here on the fringe, right? And these are old style colors, they call them. These are uh, red and blue white hearts. Uh, some people call them cornaline d'Aleppo beads, uh, but most people call them red and white hearts. There are yellow hearts, green hearts, uh, green white hearts, yellow white hearts. Uh, but the traditional color is red, uh, and then and then later blue. So and basically, it's uh, I won't get into how they make beads, but uh, the inside of the bead is white. You see that? You see the whiteness in there? And then the outside is a, a semi-transparent other color, blue and red. Okay. So, and the same thing with the other. Got white hearts here and some uh, traditional transparent uh, cobalt blue, cobalt blue. So, I think it turned out well. He wanted fringe, everything. He wanted the works, right? Old style, but new materials. Okay, for this knife right here. This thing is gorgeous, right? Now, yes, it does have a double hand guard, but they're not huge. I'll work with hand guards like this and build a sheath for it. But if they're too big, I won't do it. You, you can't get a thumb ramp on the thing. You can barely get one on the way it is. But got my tricks, right? Got my tricks. So there it is, thumb ramp and all, right? Okay. This is a traditional Bowie style. Uh, Damascus, you know, it's got nice lines. And I don't know who makes it, um, but it looks like a pretty nice knife. Okay, um, my my uh, focus was the sheath for the knife. So uh, no rhythm, no roll, no you know, there's no tip rock, nothing. This thing is solid, right? Uh, he can also take the tech lock off. And put two molly locks on here as well, okay? If he wants, right? Yeah, yeah, he can do that, absolutely. So, and the hardware is already in the holes. I, I put the hardware in. I mount the hardware from the back, so that all you gotta do is screw into it. The hardware is already there. The post, okay? Tabby dangler got some traditional uh, brass spots on it. You know. Uh, I forget what they call them, concho, or I just call them brass spots, right? And our logo, nice full grain leather, waxed, oiled, right? So there it is. Baldrick carry, right? So he wants it mainly Baldrick carry. No accessories. He wanted all leather, nice look. He's going to use this as a centerpiece for his office. And he's also going to use it. So there it is. Pretty cool. I thought it turned out well. There's even bead work on the back. Right? So. Neat. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Okay, guys. That's it. Pretty sure. I, I covered everything I wanted to cover. Right? So that's just like knife stuff that has to do with Yellowhawk. Right? And our designs. Uh, collaborations with Mike Wallace, our, our deals with uh, LT Wright. Um, I, I'll let you in on a secret. I don't mind doing this kind of stuff because, you know, life's short, right? And I don't have a lot of secrets anymore, so I can, like, tell stuff now, you know? <laughs> so, I, I may be asking Donald Duck to do something. I might be doing something with them, okay? Um, I don't know yet, okay, I just, I really, I'm on the fence with this, um, but I'll ha I'm ha I have another knife that's going to be coming out, I don't know when, is that, that uh, Bushcrafter fighter style that I designed, um, and I really wanted to have a convex grind. Mickey Mouse! It's really good at it, right? Um, the design right now is with a custom knife maker, and he's going to be making i think he's going to be making the custom version of it okay um it's a new maker but he's pretty good at what he does and i like to give guys a chance who otherwise might not be known by people right peter kohler was that way three years ago right 
and then you know we we hooked up and then he exploded right so uh you know i put him on the channel and then chris tanner got involved and chris and uh peter kohler is a household name now in our circles right uh so maybe we can do something for this kid okay um so doug wilson for yellow hawk customs outdoors thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video see ya